Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something cool and it's a borrow from the Ayla shop and it is an uh, acoustic imager. And what is an acoustic imager? Well, we all know the thermal imagers, I think. You can see and it will show you the temperature. So it has a uh, thermal camera and a visual camera and it mixes both the images and you get something like this. Well, the acoustic imager is of course not with the thermal sensor but with microphones because it can detect audio but not just normal audio the human ear can hear if it's perfectly fine about uh, 20 kilohertz and below but when you get older it goes down 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 i'm in my 50s i don't know maybe i hear up to 16k 17k this one can hear up to 100 kilohertz this thermal imager is from the brand uh, Fortrek. It is the TD2. And we can already see on the box, uh, it virtualizes sound. It can do leak detection. So imagine that in an industrial environment, it can detect vibration, of course, also. And that's because it is it can do these high frequencies. It, it can also do vibrations with that uh, frequency. It's very lightweight. It is uh, below 800 grams, I think even 770. And it is strong enough to drop it from two meters. When we look up close and we compare it to a thermal imager, it is a little bit bigger, but that also gives space for a larger screen, which is also pretty cool. Uh, but you can see the similarities. And in the front is where it all happens. So before we dive into the technical stuff, because that's why it's here, I don't have a, a practical use here in my lab for, a, for an acoustic imager, but it is still very cool technology. I think the battery lasts uh, for about uh, four hours and you can easily just replace it also. So if you want to use it longer, you just easily replace the batteries. It is mostly used in uh, industrial, but they have been always very, very expensive. I have here a few screenshots that I took from the Flare website. They also make uh, thermal imagers, but also acoustic imagers and from well-known brand Fluke, I'm a fan of the Fluke, but they are quite expensive. So it's uh, said that it can reduce the maintenance cost because it's a lot easier to detect these uh, leakages. So what I will do, I will try to explain a little bit how I think it, uh, it works. I did some research. Also, I'm going to do some uh, experiments. I have here an uh, insect repeller and this frequency is above 20 kilohertz. So for a human, you cannot hear, but this... Uh, Acoustic images should hear it. I want to try to punch a little hole in the balloon and then see if we can actually see the leak. So why is it here on the channel? I don't have any industrial use, uh, but I just like the technology. And also the price is a lot more interesting from Fluke and Flare. I think it was somewhere between 20, 30,000 euro. This one, uh, excluding VAT, it's 1,234. So one, two, three, four. So it's around 1250 euros it's a huge difference with the others but let's have a look what it can do how we think it works so the device has a normal camera so we can see and then it overlaps the sound that it can hear so if we can see in lower ranges it also picks up i think it starts at 2 kilowatts all the way up to 100 kilowatts the screen by the way is three and a half inch it's quite a lot and it is touch screen so it's easy to navigate through the menu you can use the buttons but also touch the screen in the front here you see it looks a, a little bit weird with all these shapes but in the middle here is a 13 megapixel camera so we really have a good picture even visual and here we see little holes and in all these holes not all the holes are filled there are uh, little microphones and these microphones are made it's special microphones. I think they called uh, MEMS which means micro electric mechanical system It is kind of uh, a microphone, but it is kind it changes capacity very quick That's why it's it's able to uh, 
yeah, to resonate with the sound it hears in those high frequencies and the capacity then changes also very fast and that's how they can detect it. Sometimes they have an, uh, an ASIC or an ADC inside this microphone and it has 64 of them. But what you also can see, maybe if I zoom in a little bit better, here you can see which holes are filled and which are not. And they all have a different length if you look from the center. So that way it can pick up different frequencies from different directions and can kind of calculate where the sound is coming from because it is not just the one sound, it's also not one frequency. So we have different, one sound could have different frequencies and also we could have noise from different directions. So combining all this stuff, I think one, one sound probably has a certain signature with multiple frequencies and then because it is different holes it can detect where it comes from and if we have another sound from another direction it also has a kind of a signature and then can find where it comes from. It's pretty smart. The view angle or detection angle from the microphones in, in total are 66 by 52 degrees so you really have a focused uh, beam in that sense. It can uh, detect from 30 centimeters all the way up to 100 meters, it says here. That's quite a bit. So the practical uses would be gas leaks, air leaks. I see it can even detect a, a flat tire, well, a leak in a tire, I would think. The ventilations of the car, because it's also vibration and, and sound, so you can see where you would have an air leak. Uh, even if a trainer runs by, you should be able to see or hear with the camera uh, which will make the most noise so could need uh, attention for maintenance. And the cool thing is, and I will show you later, it is also kind of a spectrum analyzer. So if it hears a sound, you focus on the sound, you can even see where in the spectrum. If I put it to full spectrum, you can see 2 kilohertz all the way up to uh, 100 kilohertz. You can see exactly where the sound is. Well, it is possible to connect the HDMI screen. I connected here uh, a 15 uh, inch one. And so it's much easier for us to see. And we can see if we talk, it detects the sound. So let's zoom in. So we see here the screen that we have. I think this is sound level. I don't know if it's, it doesn't seem to be in dBs, maybe. Um, date, time, the distance, it is now set to. And we have here the spectrum. The spectrum I can change. We see here it's between 2 and 100k. That is the full spectrum. So I can open that and of course my voice. We see here a lot of reflections from the equipment. It just bounces back. But the human voice of course is way below here because we can only hear up to 20k and a little below. Um, so my voice will be down here. And if we say, no, I'm not interested in that voice, I want to see, of course, the, it's not a touch screen. Let's say I want to hear like my dog in the higher pitch somewhere. I don't know where the dog starts, by the way. And now we see only detection here. We see a, less, a lot less reflections also here on the screen because I filtered out now my voice. And if we only want to hear a lot of high pitch, this is probably my ventilator from my heater that now starts to reflect on the test equipment. Because we see it doesn't matter if I talk or not because everything happens below here. So it's kind of having a high pass filter now. And this is just noise from my ventilation system that keeps reflecting. And there we go. More open. And then it will focus more on the lower part. And if I do only low pass, we will not hear, even when I'm quiet, we will not see the reflections of the ventilator. And now I like to see, because as a human I don't hear this, this is an uh, insect repellent. It's supposed to send a very high pitch sound or noise that the mosquitoes or flies don't like. I didn't test it on my dog yet if he gets crazy or not. Uh, I think it's just a white label more or less. But 
does it even do something? Because I, as a human, don't hear it. So let's see. I will just plug it in. Well, I really don't hear anything. And what does the camera think of it? Look at this. It is just above 22K. I would say 25K. There is a loud sound. And 52. It's probably harmonics. 52 kilohertz and between 72 look at that and that is the center of the noise and we can see again in the lower part here that is my voice so maybe if I can just take my voice out it will be like this now we only focus on the noise of the repellent and it's so weird, I really don't hear anything. Further away, further away, further away. So even though I don't hear this 22 kilohertz or 25 or 50, 75, somehow it is unpleasant. So I will stop doing this. Uh, we should be able to see leaks. So I want to do a little experiment. I have uh, balloons. I will not blow them up, punch a hole, because then we have just one big bang. So probably if I punch a little hole first, try to blow the balloon. Let's see if we can find the hole or not. So I have the balloon. I think I took a white one just because the sound has these nice colors on the screen. Uh, this is kind of sharp. So if I just punch a little hole in it, let's see if it leaks or not. Okay, so I have the balloon. I'm not sure if, <laughs> if it does leak or not. So let's have a look. Probably should not talk. Now let me filter my voice out again. Uh, like this and let's see if we can find a leak or not no I don't see the leak so maybe I didn't punch hard enough let me try again so I hope without exploding the balloon maybe if I do it like this okay I think I have made a hole Let's get the camera. Yes. That's exactly where the leak is. Of course, I can also hear it by air, but when we look at the spectrum in the right, we can see it's a very broad spectrum sound and it gets the direction correct no matter where I point the camera. It follows the sound. That is actually pretty cool. So if you are a biker and you have some money to spend, <laughs> you can find your bike tire leaks also with this one. Pretty cool. Yeah, and as the pressure goes down, because the balloon is shrinking, shrinking, the sound also gets lower because before it was wide spectrum and now you can see the sound is lower and lower. I am now further away than a meter from the balloon and the balloon is getting smaller and smaller and the pressure is going down and down and down. But it has no problem still pointing out exactly where the hole is. Getting closer and closer of course it is now more accurate. But I'm surprised how precise, even though I'm talking, I'm making noises here. It can do multiple noises at the same time. So the leak is here. And look at that. I'm making noise here. It is still pointing out that sound. And still pointing out that sound. So all these micro microphones combined still know where the sound is coming from. Even we have multiple sounds at the same time. 
quite interesting how they do that. They must indeed do sort sort of every sound has a certain signature of multiple frequencies. And that is probably how they point each out. But look at that. Pretty cool. So it can be connected to HDMI, which gives you a great big screen, of course, which is great. Uh, it has here a mini or micro, I think it's micro HDMI. It has a compact flash card, the small, smallest one, the TF. And there is a USB-C to charge, but also to, to take your uh, pictures that you make on the, on the SD card. And you can also, I think, use it even as a camera direct to stream the visuals. It has touch screen, so when you saw me changing the, the spectrum, I did it by hand. We can still see the balloon, by the way. We can still see the sound in the corner right there. And the touch screen works really well. You can see it is no effort at all. It's almost like iPhone quality touch screen. I'm struggling a bit to show this properly, but it has touch screen. There is a menu, so if we push the menu, we can do here is single, here we have multiple both the cameras, and here we have hologram only. Uh, we can change the focus point. I was usually focused in the middle. I think this is the distance you can set, so then it should be all the way up to 100. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, it was set to one meter, which in the lab here makes uh, sense. You can see the touch screen is really very, very good. Uh, color schemes, well, it's all very nice. And we have settings, storage options, well, the menu settings. There are enough videos about that I saw already. It even has a flashlight, so I'm now pretty much in the dark underneath my desk. but. Look at this bang, but that is more for the for the visual light because the audio didn't matter, but it's just better to see. And we can also see the switch mode power supply from my network switch. So I pretty much eliminated all the switch mode power supplies from my lab except for my network switch. So maybe I will replace this switch that has just a 230 AC connection with one of those switches that can run on 12 volt. And then I can run it on my lab power. So you just, that is great. You can detect also switch modes with this device. So the small vibration of this switch mode, we can just see. So that's it, the uh, Fotrek TD2, pretty useless in my lab. Now, not really, by the way, because I was able to find uh, where I still have switch mode. And they become more and more available. So now we have something that is below 1200 It's exactly one, two, three, four. <laughs> and that is a lot better than 20 or 30,000 euros. Of course, in industrial applications for finding leaks, it is a much uh, better application than displaying in my lab. But I just like the technology, of course, and wanted to share with you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.